Good morning. I want to welcome you today to our daily devotion time here at West Yakka Baptist Church. A beautiful Monday morning. As we start out our work week, we're finishing up test number two about loving our neighbor that we find here in the book of 1 John chapter 2. And we're going to finish up test two by looking at verse number 11 of that passage. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, for the beginning of our work week. We're so thankful, Father, to be able to unpack some of the richness of who you are. We praise you for the your presence in our worship service yesterday morning. We praise you, Lord, for what you're going to do for us today because we know, Lord, that if we're walking in, in you, walking with you, and you're within us, that you will open up doors of opportunity. And for this, we praise you in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, this verse number 11 here, as we're looking at it, talks about a bitter and hating man. And there's, there's a lot of bitter people in the world. This person differs somewhat from what we were talking about Saturday from that professing person in that he does not profess to know God. He is a man who is totally lost in darkness of this world. Several things are said about this man. He is in darkness and he walks in darkness. He is not of the light, not in Christ. And we'll see this sometimes with people who claim to be Christians that have never been saved. Uh, he is in darkness, walks in darkness. He's not in light. He's not in Christ. Therefore, he does not know God. He does not even profess to know God. He's wrapped up and focused only upon the world. Now, when it comes to God in Christ, he is totally in the dark and often could care less. He takes what he can, accumulates all he can, no matter who it hurts. He cares little about other people except maybe family, some close friends. He lives mainly for the pleasures and the passions of this world. Therefore, how he treats his neighbor matters little, just so that he gets what he wants. He has no direction and is blind. He does not look beyond this life, and he's blind to it. He sees little, if any, meaning to life other than getting all he can of his comfort, pleasures, po uh, possessions. Therefore, to hate his neighbor means nothing to him if his neighbor gets in the way. Now, I want us to note something here. When a man hates or is so bitter against another person, it just blinds him even more. I mean, he often focuses up on getting back at the person and loses sight of what he should be doing. He just cannot see the truth. So now, how do we apply what Jesus is saying to us? How often has a person opposed a good project simply because he was upset with the leader. The great good of the project is often clearly visible, but hatred blinds the mind and more tragically the heart. So much so that a person makes a fool out of himself without really even knowing it. And even more tragically, he often causes damage and division among other people and his soul is doomed to be in darkness forever, forever separated from the light of God, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, I, if I'm gonna say not, it was chapter four, maybe verse number four, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now, there are many men who live in darkness. 
accumulating as much money and as much uh, and material goods as possible. Now, if anyone or anything gets in their way, they'll just get run over. But only blind men run this kind of race. When it's all said and done, anyone who runs this kind of race becomes an eternal loser. Now, listen to this striking example of men who ran this kind of insane race. And I want to share you something from history. Back in 1923, there was a group of uh, what was considered at the time the world's most successful financiers. And they met at a hotel in Chicago. Now, collectively, these folks controlled more wealth than there was in the United States Treasury. And for years, newspapers, magazines had been printing their success stories and urging the youth of our nation to follow their examples. 27 years after this meeting, I want to show you what happened to some of these folks. Charles Schwab, the president of the largest independent steel company, lived on borrowed money the last five years of his life, and he died penniless. Arthur Cutton, the greatest wheat speculator, died abroad in Sabah, bankrupt. Richard Whitney, uh, the president of the New York Stock Exchange, was released from Sing Sing Prison. Albert Fall, the member of the president's council was pardoned from prison so he could die at home. Jesse Livermore, the, the greatest bear in Wall Street, committed suicide. Uh, Leon Frazier, the president of the Bank of International Settlement, committed suicide. Ivar Cougar, the head of the world's greatest monopoly committed suicide. Now, all of these men had learned how to make money, but none of them, and none of them had learned how to live. So, I want you to think about some questions today as you meditate upon this passage of Scripture out of 1 John chapter 2, verse number 11. If you had to put yourself in a category, would you say you were walking in darkness with no direction, wrapped up in and focused on the world, or are you walking in light, in the light, focused upon Christ and His purpose for you? Have you ever entered the race with the worldly? What did you get out of this race? How does a person who walks in darkness treat others? Do you ever treat others like this also? What role does bitterness have in keeping people blind? What is the secret to overcoming bitterness? Now, sad to say, sometimes I see bitterness in church. And that is really sad because we have nothing to be bitter about because we have Jesus Christ. And if we have Jesus Christ, we've got everything we ever need. Now, as I come to a close this morning and you go out into your work day, I want to ask you, what shape is your heart in? Is it beating strong? For you to live a healthy spiritual life, you have to take care of your heart. This is Christ's prescription for a healthy heart, a heart that truly knows God. Now, the, the test here, the supreme commandment is love. Now, the professing man, as we've talked over the last several days, professes God, but he hates his brother. Now, the obedient man loves his brother. And then you have that bitter and hating man. He's in darkness. He walks in darkness. He has no direction because he is just blind. So ponder upon this. Meditate upon it as you go through your work day and, 
And, and I, my prayer is that as you go through this day, meditating upon the richness of God, look for opportunities to love, to lift up the name of Jesus, to share what Christ has done in your life with someone who is downtrodden. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. And as we go into our work week, Father, I pray thy blessings upon our people. In the name of Christ, amen.